Olamet Beis, 103b on the, at the Mishnah. Kohen shalaka be'etzba'o. The Kohen that got a wound on his finger. Korach gemi. You can put a gemi, which is a seaweed type of um, uh, 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 um, a bandage, okay, so that, that they made out of uh, something like a seaweed. Be'mikdash. Uh, you're allowed to put that on in the uh, mikdash because he needs to do the service. Avalib Medina but not outside of the Beis HaMikdash in, in the country, because as we've learned several times, there's a prohibition of, put, of uh, doing medicine for something that is uh, uh, not really uh, very painful. It, it, I mean, you, it's a wound or a medicinal need that somebody would have that they can go on their day as is, but it's painful. You're not allowed to take, uh, uh, you're not allowed to do medicine for that because they would grind their own medicine and end up doing a Torah transgression of creating the potion. If it's to uh, to force blood out, so what are the ways that they would uh, heal a wound is to force some of the blood out to clean it. So they would uh, essentially create a tourniquet near there. Um, and that you cannot do use the gemi for. Now to understand the next Gemara, we have to understand uh, a few of the halachas that pertain to the clothing of the coin. A Kohen must wear the garments that the Kohen has to wear, no more, no less. So the high priest, the Kohen Gadol, has to wear the eight garments that he's supposed to wear. And the Kohen Hedyot, the minor Kohen, has to wear the four garments that he has to wear. And these garments may not have, you may not have any additional garments, as well as you may not have a barrier between the garments and the body. The, the garments have to be directly on the body. So the question is going to be about this, about this uh, bandage that's being put on. That's uh, 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 um, whether it, it counts as a separate, as an additional garment. It, another point uh, that we have to understand is that um, the coin may not have, and we saw this already the other day, a coin may not have a, a barrier between the servi- their, their hand and the service that they're doing. So if they're bringing... Uh, let's say Koina is doing Kamitsa, right? So they, they, they take a handful of, of um, the meal offering and put that on the Mizbeach. So there may not be anything separating their hand to the meal offering. So Amar of Yehuda Bereid Rabchia, so Rav Yehuda, the son of Rabchia said, Our Mishnah is only talking about putting on a bandage made out of this seaweed. Aval tzilsul katan, or putting on a small um, cloth band, uh, a, a, a bandage, have a yitur begadim. That would be an additional garment that's not allowed to be had. It, it's, it would be considered adding a garment. Uh, Jules, we are on 103b, just after the Mishnah um, on 103b. Thank you. So, it, 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 the Rabbi Yehuda, the son of Rabbi Chia, says that our Mishnah only allows the Kohen and the Beis HaMikdash to put on this gemi bandage, which is like a seaweed, a natural, um, a, a natural uh, material, but not, having, but not putting on a cloth bandage, because that would be considered adding a garment. It would be like a fifth garment for the Kohen, or a ninth if he was a Kohen Gadol. For Rabbi Yochanan Omar, however, Rabbi Yochanan says, Le Omar yitu begadim, ele He says, no, that won't count as an additional garment because it's on the hand, it's on his finger. And there is no garment on the finger. So it, it would only count as an additional garment if he had a, a shirt, uh, you know, a coat on top of his shirt, uh, you know, an additional garment on the place where there are garments. But having, a, 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 having even a cloth uh, on his on, on a wound on the finger would not count as an additional garment because that's not where garments of the coin are worn in any case. But a place that there are no coin garments, uh, there is no such thing as additional garments. So I said, okay, so Rabbi Yochanan, you're right. Uh, uh, well, uh, that uh, it doesn't count as an additional garment, but it is a barrier between the service he's doing and the chatzitza. Now, um, and on the one hand, he he shouldn't he, he he shouldn't wear it because it's a barrier. It's a, ba- a barrier between his garment, uh, sorry, his hand and the service he's doing. However, as Rashi points out, the reason why they allowed it in the Mesa Mikdash is because it's necessary. It's not nice to have a wound on your hand 
and you're doing the service. That's also not nice. So you need the bandage too. So the Gemara says, Basmol. you're right. Uh, if it was on the right hand that he's doing his service with, and the halacha is that it must be done with the right hand, as uh, Rashi quotes from the Gemara of Hulim, that the uh, uh, that the that, that the um, garment that the service of a coin must be done with the right hand. Um, so too uh, the the uh, so indeed, if you had a bandage on the right hand, that would be a problem. But we're talking about in our Mishnah that uh, the the wound is on the left hand, and so it's not going to count as a bound, as a barrier. And therefore, you can have both uh, according to Rabbi Yochanan both a gemi, a type of, uh, of uh, 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 seaweed kind of um, a bandage, or a, uh, uh, or a cloth bandage. Either one would be okay because it wouldn't count as an additional garment. However, uh, Rabbi Huda, the son of Mechia, said it can only be this natural grass material and not, uh, and not a garment, and not a, a bandage because it would count as an additional garment. Inami, or perhaps even with the right hand, be Yamin Avoda. It's in the right hand, but the the injury is not where the he's it, that where it would count as a the the bandage would be a barrier between the service that he's doing. So, for instance, on the back of his hand, not on the palm, or or wherever he wouldn't uh, need to do the service, such as uh, the way the kamitza is done, as I mentioned before, is that he takes a palmful, but only with his three middle fingers, and he cleans it off with his uh, thumb and cleans it off with his pinky. So if he had a wound at the tip of the pinky, so that's not a part of the service that he needs to do, so that would not be a, ba- a barrier. And all this disagrees uh, uh, with Rava. The Rava, the Amar Rava, Amar Rav Chista, because Rava said in the name of Rav Chista, in the area that the garments are, there, even one thread that doesn't belong there is going to be a barrier. So uh, the Kohen must wear only the four garments that the Kohen is supposed to wear and no other garments. And even and in the place of the, where the garments are, uh, on the torso, the, the legs, etc., there, even one thread is going to be a barrier. However, in the place where there are no, no garments, meaning on, your, on the hands, on the feet, on the, uh, the face. So there, there, a garment that's three by three is going to be a barrier. And over here, barrier doesn't mean a barrier between the, uh, between the service and the hand, but rather it'll count as an additional garment. But if it's less than three by three, that doesn't count as a garment. And therefore it would not be, that would not count as an invalidation because it doesn't count as a, an additional garment to what the Kohen is wearing because it's too small to count as a garment. So the Gemara says, So this must for sure be a, 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 a contradiction to Rabbi Yochanan or a, a disagreement with Rabbi Yochanan. There are contemporaries or Rav is a little later, so you can disagree with Rabbi Yochanan. The Rabbi Yehuda Bereda Rabbi me name of Liga, would we say that Rav is also in the name of Chista is a disagreement with uh, uh, the first opinion we had here after the mission of Yehuda, the son of Rabbi who said that a small bandage counts as an additional garment? Shiny Tiltzakata, the Chashif. He says, no, it's not a disagreement because even though Rav says that in order for it to count as an additional garment, it's, it has to be four by uh, three by three, but over here it's going to. Uh, uh, um, it's going to count as a, a, a garment, even if it's less than a, you know, a, a, a three by three. Three by three, by, by the way, is, is um, a three by three uh, uh, finger breadths. So uh, it's, a, it's a small, uh, a small uh, gauze pad, patch kind of thing. So over here, even though that it's a tilted cut in a small band, which is going to be even less than that, Nevertheless, it's going to count as a, enough of a garment, the chashib, because it's an important garment. It's important, and you want it there, so you, the, your, the intent and the value and the importance, it makes it into considered an additional garment and prohibited for the Kohen to do the service with an additional garment. This is all the first version of this whole conversation. The Gemara has another version of this whole conversation between um, uh, Rabbi Yudah, the son of Rabbi and Rabbi Yochanan, uh, uh, and Rav and Rochista. Lishna Achrina, another uh, another uh, version of this. Amri le Amri Yehuda of They say that the Rav Yehuda, the son of Rav Chia, said Gemi. 
that's all, that our Mishnah only allows in the Mesa Mikdash to use this seaweed, this gemi. But if it's a small van that's an actual gauze uh, or a material, that's going to count as an, an invalid, a, a invalidation on account of that it's an extra garment. And Rabbi Yochanan says, no, it can't be a, 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 a barrier. It's not a problem if it's any less than three by three. Again, three finger breaths by three finger breaths. And so Rabbi Yochanan is the one here in this version. Rabbi Yochanan is the one that says that it needs to be three uh, uh, finger, finger breaths. And, um, uh, and Rabbi Yochanan says that that would count as um, uh, if, if in the place of where the garments are supposed to be, you have this, this um, gauze or this garment that's, uh, uh, or this piece of cloth that's three, to, uh, three by three, that's going to count as uh, um, a barrier between the garment and it's going to, it's going to be invalid. So according to Rabbi Yochanan, three by three is going to count as an invalidation, a barrier between the garment and the body. Um, and it only in the place where the garments are. But if it's, if it's anywhere else, even if it's three by three, it's not going to be a problem. Um, there is going to say that, it, uh, that if it's less than three, it's not going to be a problem. Um, um, uh, if it's at the place, uh, sorry, if it's not at where the garments are, um, then three by three counts as an additional garment and it's prohib- prohibitive, like Rava would have said, and less than that is going to be okay. Behind the Rava, and it's exactly like Rava said, the Amr of Chista, the name of Chista. So let's see, let's say that Rabbi Yehuda also disagrees with, uh, uh, Rabbi Yehuda disagrees with Rava and not. Rabbi Yochanan, to which the Gemara says no. Even Rabbi Yehuda, would, uh, uh, the son of Rabbi Chia, would also agree to this. However, he feels that here it's going to be even worse. Shiny tzilzo cotton, even though that it's true usually, in order for it to count as a, an additional garment, it's gonna, it, it'll be prohibited only if it's three by three. This little band then also will count because as an additional garment because it actually is chashiv. It's, an, it, it's something that's important and what he wants. Well, Rabbi Yochanan had Ashminon, Gemi and Ashminon So why, according to Rabbi Yochanan, did we not did, did we not say that he can even use in the Beis Hamikdash a, a a small band? Why did why did the Mishnah say that he can use Gemi? He should have said that he can use even a small band as long as it's less than three by three. So he can use a bandage. Well, he wanted to teach us something else that uh, everywhere else you may not use the, the, um, um, the uh, seaweed, the gemi, because it's a, it, it's a potion. It's something that heals, and you're not allowed to use it outside of the Beis HaMikdash. So even though that in the Beis HaMikdash, there would be a greater, um, a, a greater chiddush, a, 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 more, a, 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 a more novel idea to say that you're even allowed to put a gauze band, as long as it's less than three by three on the finger, and that would be a greater leniency there, but it was important to teach that you, it, the gemi, because it wanted to tell us that outside of the base of Mikdash, she may not use this seaweed, the gemi, because it is medicinal and it is outside, and, and you're not allowed to do uh, medicinal um, uh, medicinal things on Shabbos unless it's something that is it, so bothersome that it changes the way someone uh, acts, that they, they can't continue the way they're doing. All right, so that's the end of that Mishnah. We're going to go into another Mishnah. Once we're talking about items that were done in the base of Mikdash, uh, um, and the Gemara is going to tell us some of the things that were done on Shabbos in, in the in Beis HaMikdash. So one of the things that were done, they would put salt on the ramp. The, the, um, the uh, altar, the, the outside Mizbeach, was very tall, and it was a very long ramp that, uh, that would go up to the Mizbeach. And it became very slippery. Rashi says because of the, uh, the because of rain because there was no roof over it. Um, uh, um, others say because of of um, the fats that were that were on, uh, on the from the from the carbonas from the animals that were brought on the mizbeach. 
So it was a slippery ramp. So in order not to slip, they would put salt and they would crush salt and throw it down. Now, um, you know, this was not an easy thing to walk on because it, you, the Kohanim were not allowed to wear socks or shoes. They were barefoot. So they were walking on this cold stone ramp that was wet and greasy with salt pebbles on it. So um, I hope they had a lot of calluses. But in any case, so Buzkin Melech al the on the ramp, they would put the, uh, they would put down salt, crushed salt, and put it down. In order not to slip. And they would fill from the, from the um, exile well, which is uh, um, uh, a, a, a well that was, was inaugurated by the people coming back from the, from the Golo, from the exile, and uh, the large well, um, with a galgal, with a with a uh, water mill, a, a wheel, for Shabbos, and they would do it in, on Shabbos, even though that that made quite a bit of noise. It was allowed to be done on Shabbos. And from a car well on Yantiv, and what this car is is two versions in the Gemara. We'll see. Rami le Rav Ika mi Pashrunia le Rava. Rav Ika Pashrunia asks Rava. It says that in the Beisam Mikdash, they would crush salt and put it on the Mizbeach in order not to slip. So this is done in the Beisam Mikdash, but Mikdash in the Medina Loi, but outside of the Beisam Mikdash, you're not allowed to do this. We have a contradiction from a Brisa that says, A courtyard that became muddy because of rain, and so it's hard to walk there. So maybe Tevin Amar, but you can take a, a, a straw and toss it down there, and uh, um, a, a, in order to make it so that you can walk there. Now, what's the issue? What would be um, uh, uh, what would be the difference? Why can't you put salt down, but you can put um, but you can put uh, straw down? Amar says, "Shiny Tevin Well, straw, you're not going to leave there whether it's still worthy of animal feed or whether you're going to put it into cement. Uh, either way, you're not going to waste that straw. And so therefore, it, 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 it's not like you're going to leave it there. So it's not considered a form of construction where you're smoothing out the ground with this straw. However, with salt, once it's been stepped on, nobody's taking it away. So essentially, it's filling in the 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 uh, the uh, ground and going to be prohibited. What kind of salt? What are we talking about? He's putting salt on the on the ramp of the base Hamikdash. Is he leaving it there? He's adding to the uh, to the structure. And the halacha is you're not allowed to add add anything to the structure of the Beis Hamikdash. The ramp has to be exactly the way it was made. Nothing added, nothing taken away. As it says in the verse, uh, 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 that everything was from Hashem in writing the, exactly how it should be done. Now, it, so, so the salt cannot remain there. Must be that they remove the salt after the coin has done the service uh, and, uh, and they use it. Um, they use it to, um, to, to uh, work the leathers from the skins from the animals that they take off from the carbon, they would use this salt for the leather, to, for the tanning process. Now, if he's taking it away, so then you have a, a, a problem that, as we mentioned before, the Kohen must not have anything, no barriers. That means he can't wear socks or shoes. And if you put salt down, that's also a, a barrier because he's not standing on the ramp. He's standing on something else between his feet and the ramp. So the Gemara says, you're right, but he's not doing a service at that time. And when he's not doing a service, uh, part of the service, he's allowed to have a, a barrier between his feet and the ground. He's bringing the limbs of a carbon onto the ramp, and that's the lava body. That's not a part of the service. The Gemara says, really? That's not a part of the service? Of course it is. It says clearly, the coin is the one that has to bring it close 
and burn it up on the Mizbeach. So you see the bringing close also has to be done by a Kohen, which tells us that it must be a part of the service. And the teaching is that this me, this is referring to the bringing the limbs onto the ramp. So it must be that the, the Kohen would also have to bring um, uh, uh, one, of the, one of the parts of non-service, but a part of the prep was bringing uh, the chunks of wood onto the Mizbeach in order to set up the pyre to, for the fire on the Mizbeach. So that, uh, that, that part of bringing the wood onto the Mizbeach, even though that it is a carbon, the, the wood is a part of the offerings, but it would, the bringing of it is not a part, and so therefore even they can walk on salt, not to slip. Darash Rava. So Rava announced as a halacha, he gave a drash, and he said, you should all know the halacha is this, a courtyard that got, got um, muddy and, and because of, of uh, rain, and now you can't really walk there. Maybe you're allowed to take um, uh, straw and throw it around there and spread it so that you can, so that you can walk there. Omar lay Rav Papa Rava. So Rav Papa said to Rava, Vatanya, but we learned Yeah, you can't do it normally. You can't use a basket to carry the straw and spread it. And you also can't use a a bag. You can only use the leftovers, like a torn off part of a bag or something else. You can't actually use um, anything to spread it because um, you have to do some change for Shabbos. Adar Aikim Rava Amar Ali. So Rava came and had someone speak on his behalf. V'darash and he said like this: The varm shamarti lefnechem tos hembiyadi. What I had said to you was a mistake, and I apologize. Baram, however, kach amru. This is what they said: Meshum Rabbi Elazar in the name of Rabbi Elazar. Kishu humar the ein humar the elo besal v'lebekupa elo besal v'lebekupa elo beshulekupa. When you spread the straw, which you're allowed to do in order to keep the, the it, it, to be able to walk in the in the yard, it must be done in a manner that's not going to that's uh, um, that's not going to be typical. And so you remember that it's Shabbos. In order to do so, you can't use a basket. You can't use a a bag. Uh, you can only use a torn off part of the bag or the upside down basket. The next part of the mission said you can use a, a the mill. The water mill to bring water, um, even though that it's noisy. So the Gemara is going to teach a the halachas of not making not, uh, noise on Shabbos. The halacha of not playing musical instruments, not even clapping, dancing, um, and uh, the Gemara is going to teach this idea of not making noise, um, which could lead to um, tuning an instrument. And if you do so, that's a Torah prohibition of uh, of completing a vessel. Ula Menasha. Ula came to the house of Menasha. Asahu Gabatarf Ababa, somebody came and knocked on the door. Omar, and he said, Man hai litro gufe de kamachale in the Shabsa. Who's desecrating Shabbos that wants his body desecrated? Amale Rava. So Rava said to him, What, what are you talking about? Layasru elakoshal shir. The prohibition is only musical noise, but but knocking at the door is not a problem. Esabe Abaye, so Abaye challenged him. What about this halacha? They, they, they would use this method of, uh, of uh, creating a vacuum in a pipe that had a spout at the end that had tiny holes. And they would put liquid in, um, uh, in this uh, pipe and create a vacuum by holding the, uh, the upper end. And then they would let it drip and then they would release over a pan and that would drip and create uh, a, 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 a you know a dripping sound on the pan. So malin bidyofi, you could take uh, a w- liquid up with a diofi. A diofi was really a pipe that had two ends that they would use for siphoning from one barrel to another barrel, and it's called a two a two mouth because they would put you know, the way siphoning would work. They would put the pipe in one end of the barrel, and then they would suck out some and then p- quickly put the other end in the next barrel, and it would drain itself out. So it's called a two mouth. Um, and so you can use that same idea of, of with, with a vacuum, um, 
Umetifin miarek lechola, you're allowed to make a drip with a miarek, which was like the spout that had tiny holes at it at the uh, end of this pipe. And uh, for an ill person, you're allowed to do this on Shabbos. So you see, only allowed to do it for someone that's ill, but you're not allowed to do it for someone that's healthy. Lechola in labarilot. Now, what would be the reason that they're making these dripping sounds on a, uh, on a uh, um, pan? Echidami, lav the nim v'kabayli dili tire. Isn't it that the sick, this person that's ill is asleep and they want to wake him up and they don't want to shock him when waking up. So they, how do you make an alarm on Shabbos to wake him up gently? So by using this drip water, this drip system on a, on a pan to make a sound, uh, a dripping sound, which will hopefully wake him up slowly, but, but enough. Shmamina eludi kala asi. You see, making a noise is prohibited unless it's for an ill person, but for a regular person, it's going to be prohibited. So the Gemara says, no, the other way round. Loi, the tear, it's somebody that's awake and they're ill, a kaboy delaynim. He wants to fall asleep and he's having a difficulty. And to create like a white noise, a calm noise, the lishtama ki kala de zamzumi to make a zamzumi sound, which is sort of musical, sort of rhythmic, and to have a rhythmic sound. So they make this where it's gonna, you know, have multiple drips going on and it'll calm the person. And, and that's more music-like and that's why it's prohibited. But indeed, to, to, to make a sound uh, just by clapping or stamping, uh, 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 stomping, that's not gonna be prohibited. And so we ask another question, which similarly is gonna try and prove that that any type of music is go- any type of sound is prohibited, not only musical sounds. Hamashami and Peroso, somebody is guarding an orchard or produce, the Pnea Ophus, in order to keep birds away. Or the gourd, for, because uh, trying to keep animals away. Mashama Kadaka Bashabas is allowed to guard it on Shabbos in a normal way. However, he can't, in order to scare the animal away, he can't smack him, uh, uh, his own body in order to make a loud sound or stomp his feet or, or clap. You can't do that because that's going to, sp- in order to care- scare the animal away because you're making a noise. The way you would do it on a weekday. Now, my timer, color, isn't it because he's making a noise? So you see, even though it's not musical, he's trying to scare the animal. So it's clearly not a musical sound. He's trying to make a... a a, 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 you know, a scaring, uh, 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 to startle the animal. And yet, uh, uh, and yet it's uh, prohibited. So that tells us that any type of making sound is prohibited, even knocking on a door. No, there the issue is that he may take, pick up a pebble and throw it at the bird or the animal. And that's why it's prohibited. Well, what about, they used to play, like we play marbles or, 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 or uh, you know, sort of like bowling, they would play with walnuts. So uh, uh, it seems like the women would play this game and the women playing in, uh, walnuts is prohibited. Wouldn't you say the reason is, my time allowed to come out of the color because when they hit each other, they make a sound. And they making a sound of Shabbos is prohibited. The Rabbi says, look, that's not the reason. The The reason over there you can't play it on Shabbos is in order to, that you may come to smooth the ground out in order to make a smooth path for your rolling of the of the walnuts, so that it it, it, it you know doesn't stray, you, so your roll goes well, and that's prohibited on the Shabbos because you're com- smoothing out the ground, which is obviously a form of construction of 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 setting the ground straight. The Eloite Malchi, and I'll prove it to you because if that's not the reason, why would it be prohibited with apples? They would also play with apples sometimes, and there it's clearly not because it makes a sound. There, it's not because they're making a sound. Rather, it's because he's going to smooth out the ground, and that's prohibited. So now, so now back to our Mishnah. Our Mishnah said that you're allowed to fill water in the Beis Hamikdash from this well that's called the Gola well, from the large well, Begalga, with a wheel. Veshavis, Bemikdash, only in the Beis Hamikdash, in Medina Loi, but outside of the Beis Hamikdash, you're not allowed to. So you see that making a noise is prohibited. That's why it's uh, 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 my time. Wouldn't you say the reason is because it makes a sound and outside of the base of Victor, you're not allowed to do anything that makes noise? Like, no, the reason that outside of the base of Victor, you're not allowed to is because if you fill water from such a wheel, you may end up watering your, your, your garden or watering 
you're you're ruined. In Mechuzah, however, and because of this, Amemer allowed them to use a, a, a water uh, wheel to get water on Shabbos. He said, because this, the people don't have gardens there. Amar, my time goes, Rabban Hashem, Yamalek, Yinosim, Chavos. He said, what's the reason it's prohibited? Because you may end up watering your garden. Over here in Mechuzah, there are no gardens, there are no ruins. However, he went to Kachaza, the Kataru, Kipna. But when he saw that people started gathering water in order to soak their their uh, um, uh, their kitna, which is either uh, flax or or kusmin, which is I think rye, um, one of the five grains, aselu, so he prohibited. We're now on kuf dalan on base one hundred four b, umabe It also says. That you're not allowed to fill from the um, uh, uh, from the uh, um, sorry you're allowed to fill from the be'er hakar from the well that is the car uh, uh, on yantiv. So my be'er hakar, what does it mean? The car. Now the word car over here can mean one of two things. It can be from the uh, the the uh, a word um, uh, occurrence like hikre. Um, uh, something that is a, a, an occurrence, or it can mean from the source. So those are the two ideas that we're going to have here. So Amashmul stories happen there. So that's what um, uh, um, uh, that that's what that's how it got its name. That when they came um, when they came back from the exile. Uh, they needed it, as the Gemara is going to say, and they made it permissible, and they removed the prohibition of gathering water from there, and therefore it remained um, uh, permissible, but only that well itself. So ask a question. It says not all wells that car that are car are permissible. Only this one. Now, if you tell me it's because of the story that happened there, that's the only one the story happened by, so then it would only be that individual well. Why do you say plural? What does it mean only this one? This is the only one that it happened. And if it happened to others and they permitted it, so then it should also be permissible. It means that it had, not only was it a gathered, it wasn't gathered water of rain, but rather it was a well water. It had a well spring coming into it. Shanam Arav says, and that's from the word makar, the source. It has a source. It has a wellspring coming into it. Gufa. So now let's analyze the statement. Look about Hakaris They didn't permit all of these wells that have sources. El Azubavad, only this one. When the people came back from the exile from Babylon, from Bava, Chanu Alel, they rested on this, they, 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 they encamped around this well. Unavim Shebeneim, and the prophets that were amongst them, which were Chagai, Zechari, and Malachi, Hitiru Lehem, they allowed it to them uh, for that Shabbos because they were in great need, and so it was permissible. Vulay um, Nevim um, Shebeneim, not the, the uh, um, prophets permitted it. Ella Minagam Asebeneim, it's the custom to maintain it from, from that time that it was permissible it maintains this permission, this permission of bring, drawing the water on Shabbos, and that is what has been kept for the generations. And that's why the Mishnah says you're allowed to draw the water on Yantif, even outside of the Mesa.